And this year marks the 60th anniversary of the March on Washington. It was on August 28, 1963, that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his acclaimed I Have a Dream speech on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. That's right. Now, 60 years later, King's speech echoes as an anthem for young black Americans still marching and fighting for some of the same rights Dr. King and many others fought for. WJZ takes a closer look at the inspiration and the future of this prolonged fight for equality. I have a dream, a phrase that transcended the minds of millions in 1963. It was a march in Washington for jobs and freedom that captivated America and created countless activists in the continued fight for civil rights. As a leader today, I'm preserving the legacy of myself and other leaders that are charging this fight forward. Forward into a new generation of young leaders like Tariah Highland of Howard University and Michelle Spann of Morgan State, both fighting the good fight for issues that span decades in America. We're fighting against voter suppression now um, because still there are tactics against our rights as voters. The maternal mortality rate for black women. Um, also education, we see that our history oftentimes is left out of the curriculum um, and is still trying to be taken out of the uh, curriculum, our true history. A history that is hard to swallow for many, but in it, a show of resilience and determination by activists whose names were once unheard of. By Angela Davis, Asada Shakur, um, James Baldwin, Toni Morrison. A big one for me is Shirley Chisholm. She is someone that just inspires me so much, especially as a political science major and someone that aspires to um, be a force within the political space. She um, sets a big standard for me, um, John Lewis. The list of names can go on and on, but what's clear is that the March in Washington in 1963 marked a giant torch that continues to be passed on to the current generation of leaders and activists carrying the legacy of their ancestors. Young people need to be able to think and understand their history, whether you agree with it or not, and understand that they're responsible now as heirs to this legacy to further the idea of democracy, to further the idea of inclusion, and to further the idea of our humanity. It's the humanity of African Americans that became the center point of Dr. King's dream on that summer day in August of 1963, as he looked out over the sea of people all wanting the same thing. I hope that I'm making you proud. I hope that I'm carrying on what you laid the foundation for us to do, what you wanted us to do, what surpassing like your wildest dreams of what we would have been able to do. It's fueling for me as a leader, um, and it's a remind. It serves as a reminder of the work that is still to be done, um, because we've made great strides, but there is still a ways to go. Inspiring this generation and their tenacity to truly let freedom ring, just as Dr. King said on that summer day 60 years ago. When this happens, all men will be able to stand together, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, and sing a new song, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we're free at last. And that's all of us. Now, a commemorative march on uh, Washington's uh, for the 60th anniversary event will convene on the National Mall in D.C. on Saturday. It's August 26th, starting at 8 a.m.